35 years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. It's Alex. It's the Ramble from the most infected city in the world. Yes, until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Hi, how are you, everybody? I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, here I am again. Uh, still, um, still avoiding so far. That's not gone for Micah. Okay, I don't know if that's for Micah. It's something. I don't know. Some kind of. Anyway, um, still uh, still avoiding the uh, the pandemic. Boy, I feel like I'm tap dancing. You know, I'm tap dancing, sidetracking it. Uh, and on top of that, if uh, well, this eye, I don't know if it looks swollen at all. But uh, I've been having, uh, I, I, I have allergies. And whenever the allergy season hits, man, this eye especially gets really puffy. And I, I was supposed to have this eye operated on because it has kind of a droop that then catches, you get what I'm saying? It catches the, the uh, pollen and it catches air and stuff and bacteria. And then it can get infected. So I was supposed to go have my eye done. But then this damn coronavirus hit, and I can't, couldn't do it. So it's going to be a while. So I'm going to have to put up with this for a while. Uh, but this is just bothering me. It's not infected or anything like that. It hasn't turned red. Okay. So if you see me every now and then dabbing my eye with this, it's because I uh, I'm uh, trying to uh, keep it from itching. Okay. Uh, yes, Alex, you, you tune into this program and every day you find out another update on my illnesses. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, that's great. Got a little something for you coming up in a little bit, but first, we, I guess, have to go over and, uh, uh, and, and look at, the, uh, look at the, the world map, see where everybody's sick right now. Look at that. There it is, our nightly map. This, by the way, is uh, courtesy of Johns Hopkins University, who made up this fine map, which you may have seen elsewhere beside my show on a lot of other programs uh, and a lot of other radio and TV and things like that, you know. So uh, um, it's, uh, it's, you know, it, it, a, lot of, uh, a lot of stuff uh, out there, that you, a lot of things out there that use this, okay? All right? But anyway, there's the world, and we're up to 3,753,782 confirmed cases. Now, that is confirmed cases. That is not maybe all the cases in the world, okay? All right. That means that there have been, and if you see the map over here, here I'll, I'll put up my, I should make a bigger arrow so that when I do this you can see my, my arrow. See my arrow there? Okay. 263,785 deaths in the world, of which um, the U.S. has 73,418 of those. Uh, let's go to the U.S., by the way. Uh, well, first, let's look at the rest of this map. Uh, what is, how, many, how many does Russia have here? Uh, Russia has, uh, they say, confirmed 165,929 with 1,537 deaths. Do you believe that? I don't believe it. And neither do most people in the world. Uh, China over here, which uh, this is like part of China. That's who buy China. And there's, uh, where's, where's, well, there's Beijing. Beijing, are you going to believe this? Uh, I, and I, I, I just, I don't believe this number, okay? I mean, since the whole thing broke out in China, or they think it, they don't think anymore that it broke out in China, actually. Uh, that it showed up in China, first of all, but that it, uh, that it may have been around since last November, maybe earlier than that, and that the first cases may have been reported as other kinds of deaths, okay? 
But they say in Beijing they have uh, 593 confirmed and nine deaths. I, I just don't believe that number. I'm not going to believe that number. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's the way they are. Uh, let me see here. We go around. Well, let's go to the U.S. here. Let's look at today's uh, uh, 1,000, 1 million rather, 228,214. That's a lie, too. We think the number is much higher than that, but those are total confirmed. Uh, there are a lot that I think are, we believe are not being reported yet, especially by a lot of uh, the um, nursing homes, all right? Uh, global deaths. Uh, wait a minute. Why did, why did we suddenly have global deaths showing up there? We don't want global deaths. We want, uh, there we go. Well, the, uh, the, in America, here we go. I don't know why it says global deaths there, but. It's 73,431. Now, the president says, well, we may reach 100,000. That's a big difference from the estimate he gave us a couple of weeks ago, which it's only going to be a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. And before that, it was, uh, this is nothing worse than the flu, than a cold, than a bad cold. Um, now he says it's going to be 100,000. Uh, and what he also did is he, uh, if you remember today, yesterday he disbanded the coronavirus task force, and today he said, well, we're going to continue with it because it's so popular. The only thing that's popular about his coronavirus task force are the daily briefings in which we saw Donald Trump make an absolute idiotic fool out of himself. Um, and he just, he tries to put a bright, light on everything that he does. Oh, well, you know, I suddenly realized that I didn't expect that it was going to be that popular. So I'm bringing it back today. You know, he would like to get rid of Fauci as fast as possible. He doesn't want, but he's got to keep Fauci on his team because then he can keep him from uh, going before the uh, Congress. If he gets rid of him, then Fauci's free to go anywhere he wants to. Ta-da, Okay. Anyway, he doesn't want him speaking to Congress. It's okay if he speaks to the Senate because they're Republicans. All right. Anyway, we've got, uh, and we don't, we, we have the deaths in New York here. Well, wait a minute. The recovered in New York are 54,597. The deaths are 25,000. This number doesn't look right. Oh, oh, this is New York State, I think, is 25,623. It just doesn't seem right. For some strange reason, the number seems to, I've seen it lower than that, but I, uh, this map is kind of getting a little wonky lately. Um, number two is Spain. They've got, uh, they're, uh, they're, they've got uh, 3,755,341 uh, confirmed. Uh, with uh, 263,795 deaths, I guess, in Spain. No. See, it, oh, here we go. They've changed this map on me, see? That, that, that doesn't work there. Um, the deaths in, uh, in Spain are 25,857. Uh, then we go to Italy... Okay, and I got to go here. See, you got to do that, and then I got to do. Um, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, they they say there are. See, that's, that's something very wrong with this map today. Oh well, pay no attention to the map, folks. Uh, uh, but I do know that the U.S. Um, has uh, seventy-three thousand four hundred eighteen deaths. Okay, all right. Okay, is that all right? The, is that enough? All right, enough of the enough of the map. For some reason, the map isn't uh, isn't looking like it once did, and it's uh, it's got problems. But we'll worry about that later. Let me see here. Let me get a few things here in order. I have to, you know, because I do this whole thing myself, right? So anyway, our president has uh, yesterday disbanded his uh, his his team, right? His uh, Corona's task force, and today it's back on again because it was so popular. 
No, because so many people said, why are you doing away with that? He, this man vacillates from day to day on everything. And that's why the American public doesn't feel that the, 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 the rudder of the, of the boat is in the right hands, okay? That he's not steering the ship very well. In fact, he's doing a terrible job of it. In fact, if you want to say that we've got uh, something like 25,000, what, 75,000 deaths or 73,000 deaths, uh, I would blame it on Trump, okay? Because he didn't take decisive action. Now, the, the interesting thing is, is that they feel that the, uh, the coronavirus did not start in China, that it started somewhere in Europe, and that uh, it, we, it, it came over here long before the Chinese virus came over here, and that some people may have died of it, but now they're going back and looking at the deaths like around November to see if any of them look suspiciously like they have the uh, hallmarks of being the coronavirus. So, anyway. Hey, Liz, I got something for you here. Uh, there, I've been telling a story for years, and a lot of people kind of, oh, yeah, sure, Alex, sure. Yeah, we believe that, you know. Let me tell you the story. Uh, I was working at KML in uh, San Francisco. That's where I first went when I first went to San Francisco. I was there for about, I think, almost two years. Um, and in 1981, in August of 1981, or maybe just a few days, about a couple of weeks before August, uh, so that would be uh, July, uh, my boss, who was Rick Lee at the time, general manager of the radio station, said, hey, you want to drive down with me to uh, San Jose? And I said, why? He says, they're having this big kind of like coming out party for this thing. And I said, what is it? They said, something called MTV. Uh, it seemed as though the only place in the Bay Area where MTV was going to be playing was in the South Bay, so they decided to hold a party down there and to uh, uh, debut MTV for the press and, uh, and, and so on. So I said, sure, you know, I'm always up for a free hors d'oeuvre. So we drive down there, and I'd heard about this MTV. And... Um, I, um, I'm standing there, and they say, okay, now we're going to play the, uh, the MTV um, promo reel. It was kind of like a demo reel. Hey, here's you. MTV, it's music television. Here's who our people are, Mark Goodman, and uh, I can't remember all the different people they had there at the time. And... Um, uh, and, and so they were doing, they were going to play, they played that. They were, and so they put it on. And we're all standing there watching it. And then all of a sudden, Mark Goodman says, uh, and here with uh, MTV Report is Alex Bennett. And everybody in the room turns around and stares at me and goes, you're with MTV? I said, I guess I am now. Turns out that a couple of weeks earlier, I had gone into a place called Video West in San Francisco. They had called me in and said, would you like to audition for something that we're going to do, some pieces we're going to do for this new thing called MTV? And I said, uh, yeah, sure, um, uh, I'm happy to do it. So I went in, I read the script, and um, then I, 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 they said, well, listen, we'll be in touch. Okay, uh, well, I didn't get it. You know, when they say that you're going to be in touch, you know, that's not going to happen. But here I am sitting there, and there's the audition that I did, and I am on the promo reel for MTV. Well, after the fact, I was told by Video West, yeah, they picked us up to do these news reports, and you're one of them. We're going to make you the L.A. reporter. We did all these things out of San Francisco, but I, I was the L.A. reporter, Okay. And I said, fine, cool. You know, I'd rather be the New York reporter, but uh, L.A. reporter is fine. And then I would just simply go in every week and announce these things and so on. Well, you know, when I tell this story to people, they always kind of give me the, yeah, Alex, yeah, another one of your wonderful accomplishments in life. Yeah, yeah, sure, you were with MTV. And nobody believes me because here's the reason why. For the first year that MTV was on, they weren't on in San Francisco. They were only on in San Jose. It wasn't until the second year of MTV 
that they started getting clearance on San Francisco cable systems. And at the end of a year, MTV stopped using Video West to produce these little snippets for them and started their own MTV news department, which I think, if I remember correctly, the reporter on that was Matt Lauer. Um, but in any event, nobody ever believed that I was there when MTV first started. Until now. A guy by the name, I'm trying to remember his name now because he, he sent me a whole bunch of stuff. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can. Uh, I want to give him credit if I can. It would be very nice if I did. Hold on a second. Let me see. Here's name is. Huh, I don't have his name here. Wait a minute. Yes, I think I do. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. It's Sean Carroll. And he sent me a thing, and he said, uh, he, he had a thing on, uh, on, on my uh, Facebook page that simply said, uh, 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 at a minute and 38 seconds into MTV's history, the first on-screen mention of Alex Bennett. So I wrote him, and I said, where'd you find it? And he told me where to go, and there was a, a reel available of the first four hours of MTV. The first four hours ever. I mean, they signed on. They played. Do you know what the first song was? Yeah. Video Killed the Radio Star, uh, which I always consider was my theme song because I had been in radio, and then I went to Midnight Blue in New York, and I was always singing this song, Radio Killed the, uh, video killed the Radio Star. But anyway, uh, and it then they went into some more music, and then they had a few other things, and finally... Finally, at about a minute and 38 seconds, a, an hour and 38 seconds into the first day of MTV, which was, I believe, August 1st, if I'm not mistaken, August 1st, uh, 1981. Or maybe it was August 8th. I'm trying to remember now. Wait a minute. I can also find that out for you. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I've got Because I've got the file here, and it's got the date on it. Um, do, 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 uh, oh, it was Saturday, August 1st, 1981. That was when MTV first went on the air in a minute and 38 seconds, an uh, hour and 38 seconds, uh, 38 minutes, can I try this again? An hour and 38 minutes into it. Here is what I found. Rock memorabilia sells for high prices these days. You might not know that a copy of My Bonnie by the Beatles is worth 800 bucks, or that the original album cover for Yesterday and Today, the Butcher Block cover by the Beatles, goes for 500. Now, it's not just Lennon McCartney hits that are collector's items either. We have Alex Bennett to fill us in on valuable rock and roll. Alex. Now the problem here is, is that we don't have any, uh, we don't even, ha we don't actually have the, uh, the, uh, the music, well, we don't, we just have the music. We don't have my audio. Uh, and we, I was trying to figure out why, and I was going back and forth with this guy who I got this from. And um, uh, it, it, what happened was, is usually in those days you recorded things on three-quarter inch cassettes. And then maybe you'd put the music track, right, on one of the two tracks, so you wouldn't use the full stereo. And on the other track, you'd put the, the narration. Apparently, there were a lot of fuck-ups on that first day of MTV, okay? And in screwing up, they only played one channel. If they played the other channel, I guess I could legitimately say I was on MTV the first day they went on the air. But unfortunately, that is not the case, okay? So... <laughs> Uh, but, but nevertheless, history will remember this. Rock memorabilia sells for high prices these days. You might not know that a copy of My Bonnie by the Beatles is worth 800 bucks, or that the original album cover for Yesterday and Today, the Butcher Block cover by the Beatles, goes for 500. Now, it's not just Lennon McCartney hits that are collector's items either. We have Alex Bennett to fill us in on valuable rock and roll. Alex. Yeah, so that was, uh, that was, uh, that was my... Uh, and f I did it for a year. I did it for a year. I, I wasn't the only one. There were, f I think, four of us, and they alternated us. And I, I, 
I never got to see them play because uh, in that first year I was living in San Francisco and the cable systems in San Francisco did not carry it. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, that's a little bit of memorabilia from the Bennett file. Okay, let me see here. Let me uh, turn on the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, Skype here. Um, but I thought you'd be interested in that. Uh, and as I say, everybody looked at me and went, you're on MTV? And I went, uh, no. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I guess I, I think my, my line back to them was, I guess I am now, okay? Uh, and uh, sure enough, I was. Uh, I think I got paid $35 <laughs> a report. <laughs> oh, well, you know. So here comes Brian Neary. He's always the first one out of the uh, out of the box here. Uh, let me see here, and then I I I I, I can just uh, number one. Hmm? Number one. Number one. You you get got your spot again. <laughs> there you go. You got your spot. Okay. Anyway. So how about that? See, I was on the first the first <clears throat> first hour and thirty eight minutes of MTV ever. I was in junior high school. You were, <laughs> you were in junior high school. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Did you listen to me back in those days at all? No, live one hundred and five, live one hundred and five for sure. Really, live one hundred and five. Every for single, sure. every yeah. single morning. And I, I told you this before. I, I know you're probably trying to get people on, but I told you this before. I used to work for Ansel Adams' daughter. And Ansel Adams' granddaughter and I listened, and we had it blaring in, in the warehouse yeah. where all his photographs and everything were. So, yeah. 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 So, but, but no, but you listened to me on Live 105. Yep. So that was, uh, that, that was, uh, that was, uh, so you did listen to me in San Francisco. Yes. Oh, Charlie Wallace. Wait a minute. Hold on <clears> a second. <throat> okay. Charlie, where are you, Charlie? Are you there, Charlie? Charlie, Charlie turn on your camera. You... I'm trying. Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. Okay, and then I got to go over here, and I got to put Phil Meyer in, and we got Phil Meyer in his spot where he was last night. So, um, anyway, that was my uh, that was that was my great uh, claim to fame of being on MTV. Uh, the first day they went on the air, and I'm I didn't sure a thing. Huh? I I didn't hear a thing. Some some guy with foo foo hair was talking about some guy, Alex Bennett. He could have been talking about the butcher, you know? Yeah. And I, what did I hear? I didn't hear Alex Bennett. You oh, know? oh, you didn't did, hear did Alex Bennett? Did they show Bennett? you on the video? Wait a minute. Did they show you on the video at all? Hold on a second. Hold on. Now listen closely, Phil. Yeah. Rock memorabilia sells for high prices these days. You might not know that a copy of My Bonnie by the Beatles is worth 800 bucks, or that the original album cover for Yesterday and Today, the Butcher Block cover by the Beatles, goes for 500. Now, it's not just Lennon McCartney hits that are collector's items either. We have Alex Bennett to fill us in on valuable rock and roll. Alex. No okay. Alex. Alex. <laughs> that, 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 was, uh, that was the, you know, uh, Herman the Butcher. Uh, and he calls himself Alex Bennett. No, I, I didn't see. hear you on on that thing. Hmm. You know, I think he was playing that. He, he, he was in the other track that didn't get played. Well, what's, uh, what uh, I'm so uh, thrilled uh, about that, is that for years I have never had any any proof I could show somebody that I actually did these things for MTV. And, and the, you still and I didn't realize I was actually on the first day because I never saw that until now. So, but no. did they show you on the video at all? Uh, no, audio? no, it was my voice. But Only but they were according to the the guy. He says if you watch the if you watch the the first four hours, they're fucking up like crazy. They're mm -hmm. running yeah. Mark Goodman introducing something and then something else plays. You know they didn't they they had first day jitters and part of that first day jitters was is that I was on a second audio track which they were supposed to play both of them, but they didn't play mine. So. Hey, uh, so w was that your hand flipping the albums? No, <laughs> I wasn't anywhere in there. They would go out and sh shoot these things, and and uh, then I would just come in and narrate them. Uh, you know, but I was the reporter, <clears throat> and yeah. so there were four of us. Are you having trouble today, Rob? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? You're not able to get your audio out? 
No audio. <laughs> can't hear you. No audio. He can't figure it out. He's got to uh, flip the button. Yeah. yeah. No? Gee, you're a regular Jeff. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Need some wine. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be a big shot. Like I always said, I used to be a big shot. <laughs> and now you were in 81 you were wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute we can hear something clicking there rob jeff no it's not jeff uh, not i we yeah. hear you we hear you click clicking a little bit there rob see he's nice oblique he's having technical problems <laughs> yeah oh boy Nope. Nope. No sound. No you sound. put lime in the coconut. Well, um, I, no I, sound. I, I know what he's going through because every now and then, you know, all of a sudden I try to figure out what wire came undone, you know. And well, it only happens when you're right getting on. Yeah, yeah well, no, I, I, really, I really haven't had any audio problems, to tell you the damn truth. Video, yeah, but not audio. What, uh, trouble with uh, with YouTube and configuring YouTube, yeah, because sometimes it, it'll do something and it will change my uh, my stream key, and then I've got to change the key to the, and, and sometimes it's right after I go on the air, I suddenly notice it isn't it isn't running, okay. and so I have to change the key and with, stuff. It, it, that happened to me the other night. So yeah, same thing happens with my stream. Yeah, you know, well, you're, you're, you don't have one anymore. No, I got a better one now than I used to. <laughs> Listen, I've been going through that, you know, so, with the thing. You know, I just, I hope I can go the hour and a half of this show without having to go during the hour and a half of the show. So, yeah. you know. Mm. Um, anyway, so where was I? Uh, um, so, um, let me see here. Ooh, uh, how many people do we have now? Oh, a lot of people listening. Got a lot of people lately listening to the show. They got nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, captive <laughs> audience. <laughs> wait till yeah. wait till you guys are out. There's yeah. going to be just you and I, Alex. Yeah. And you, Phil. you know what our governor <laughs> said today, and I wasn't able to figure out at all uh, that uh, he he made the statement that the uh, something like. 78% of the people who go to the hospital have basically stayed at home. And they don't know how to how to parse that. They don't know how to figure that one out. Mm, you know? Uh, yeah. That every day we come up with another mysterious piece of information we never knew before. <clears throat> like now we're suddenly finding out, no, this didn't come from China. You know, it came from Europe. And that it may have been here as early as last November, and we don't have any reports of it because we weren't looking for it. You know. Remember, Bree kept saying he was sick like in December. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, but he doesn't know if he had COVID. You know, uh, he, he thinks he, he just had the flu. Huh? He thinks. Well, he, he had never the calls flu. this show anymore anyway, so I couldn't ask he, him, but, you know. You know, when he was on that bus. Uh, he he didn't feel good, but he you know he didn't have the symptoms of uh, Corona. His chest wasn't uh, uh, no, hurting. This was, a, this was before Some that. Some people though. don't. Yeah, yeah, that was before that. And of course, as you all know, our president is totally immune from it. Mm -hmm. That's why he doesn't wear any uh, protective uh, gear. He wears no, a you just, huh? He, he wears. Just didn't see well, no, he says. He says. I, uh, this is. I, I don't know if this is a quote, but I assume it's a quote uh, that he doesn't need to because he wears a condom. Check, check. So check. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, he's got audio. It, what was it? Rob? What, what was it, Rob? So I've been back there behind everything, you yeah. know, with all the crap. Yeah. And I, I'm sitting here and I'm I'm talking and I'm not I'm seeing the microphone processor lights going and i'm like okay so the mic's working i was behind here today doing a you know i'm still setting this thing hold this whole thing up and one of the quarter inch phono jacks was just out of the processor in the back the mic processor you were behind and that's what there? caused it that's what you caused were behind it. there now can i, I now can i go back to my very <laughs> funny joke about donald trump 
But he said he didn't yeah. have to wear a mask yesterday because he wears a condom. Anyway, ta -da. Ta -da. he said he hey, said the cameras just didn't get him. He said he was wearing a mask, but you may not have seen him wear a mask. Did he say he that? He said he had a Honeywell mask, a 3M mask, and he had about three others or four others, he said. And you just didn't see me wear it. That's all. He, oh. he has a stealth mask. <laughs> Who really? Did mask? he say that? Really? That's what he said. Yep. He said, you just didn't see me wear it. And then they're talking like, he oh, didn't cameras say were on that. him nonstop. Boy. Yeah, it's, maybe he has one of those masks that has the photo of the bottom of his face. <laughs> <laughs> I had one with a skeleton looking. <laughs> that right maybe on. that isn't his face and it's a mask. <laughs> <laughs> You're making fun of our president. What? Yeah. Yeah. Blasphemy. Yeah, we're making present in front of our president. Blasphemous. Yes. Blast for you? Blast for me. Yeah. Oh boy. I yeah. <laughs> I I I give up. You know, there are uh there are but what's that, how many did I say in America right now uh, are dead? Seventy three thousand something. Seventy three thousand, yeah. And I I think I, I think some of that has to be put on the on the uh on the backs of the president, because the buck should stop there, and uh, we weren't being we weren't being he was denying the whole thing for so long, you know. Yes, Charlie. Uh, Tony Magno uh, posted something today that said that uh, on March fifteenth, South Korea and the United States had exactly the same number of deaths. Since then, South Korea's had eighty five deaths. And the United States has had 63,000. Uh, you know, I'm now 70 something thousand. You yeah. know why? Uh, because the age, uh, the, uh, the population age of, uh, of South Korea is so much younger than the population oh, okay. age. That, that's of our the, excuse. Nope, that's yeah, that, that is. is that the excuse no. for the great disparity? Nope. Is that the and excuse for the, the, the What they did old, is they the tested old. everybody, they tested every fucking person that turned out po positive. They trust. They te they went back and traced everybody they had contact with, and they quarantined all of them so the virus stopped spreading. Brian's agreeing. We could have done that. Brian, no, we couldn't because people wouldn't deal with the quarantine. That's they have rights. I yeah. just heard that. <clears throat> no, you don't have rights. If you have typhus, you can't. You can't say I'm not going to quarantine. <laughs> yeah, they they took very strict measures. I heard. That's. Yeah. They Very tested everybody. Yeah. Trump wasted six weeks without even... He could have built up our whole testing supply so we could have been ready for it, but he didn't do shit. Hmm. Yeah, all 70,000 of those are on Trump. Well, you know, I mean, what are we going to do about it now? You know, but this is, this is what happens when you have somebody who doesn't know how... It doesn't know how to be presidential. Oh, you're going to walk out? Chicken? <laughs> chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a fact. South Korea has only had like 180 deaths. Yeah, there's a great disparity between that and having an age difference, you know? Yeah. I mean, that age difference stuff is crap. Yeah, yeah. I should be the one walking out because he believes all this stuff, you know? When, when Trump says, oh, you know, I didn't realize how popular. Uh, my coronavirus team was. It was very popular because we loved seeing him make a fool of himself every day. It was the greatest. In the morning, you got a good, serious uh, uh, rec recitation of the problem, and in the evening, you got a comedy show. You know, we, I miss it greatly. I wish they would bring it back. Fauci and all. They had uh, the, the uh, ambassador Susan Rice on just mm -hmm. before uh, the show started mm -hmm. on uh, Don Lemon. Mm -hmm. talking about the whole pandemic playbook mm -hmm. and how detailed they went, just like Bush did to them, mm -hmm. Obama's group did to Trump's mm -hmm. group, and went through all the detail of the book, how the stockpiles, they said 2016, they took an inventory and all the stockpiles were full, and then they just showed the process of everything falling out. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was on the Don Lemon team. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, well, you know, I mean, he he killed that whole um, that whole 
uh, team that was built yeah. up and that whole playbook was thrown out yeah. the window. Yeah. You know, and she I, said, yeah, she just said that that book was full of questions, you know, so right when, if something happens here, these are the questions to start asking to make sure that the stockpiles are full, make sure the testing is started. And then she also referred to, you know, he referred to the Obama administration of not having good tests. He said they left him with that. And, you know, she's like, well, how can you have a test for something that's not gone through yet? You know, no coronavirus. Yeah. They can come up with a coronavirus test. So he just keeps blaming the Obama, you know, administration for all this Well, stuff. you can't come up with a coronavirus test when there's no coronavirus. Exactly. exactly. I mean, we it did. In fact, in, fact, in, fact, in fact, we do have coronavirus vaccines, but they were for all the other coronaviruses. Am yeah. I correct, Brian? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That the yeah. average flu that came out every year, some of them were coronaviruses. So I heard on the radio this morning that uh, they're hopeful that we might have a vaccine by the fall because of um, uh, it's it's. Uh, how did he say it? He said that the 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 base of the vaccine is what is used for um, the flu. And so that will sail right through. And now they're testing. They've got a vaccine that they believe is going to, uh, by the fall, we could have a vaccine. And it's one of what it's one of what the federal government has decided to go ahead and start manufacturing, so that once it's approved, there'll be millions of doses out there. So yeah, it could be yeah. by September, we do have a vaccine. Mm, and, so. and I believe that because, like, for us when we're trying to find the targets for the for our testing, the same thing. We already had the basis of the flu. So when we went to FDA, of course, we already had the accelerated time because of the uh, emergency. But we already had such a big head start because of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that would be good. Yeah, very yeah. good. That would be very good. Uh, let me see here. Bree's calling. Uh, he hasn't called in ah, quite a while. We haven't heard from Bree. Uh, yeah, I'd see. like to just comment on the YouTube channel now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Where where are you? You're not. Have you got a picture at all? Yeah, I see him. Okay, hold on a second. I gotta find him. Um, I'll take a second. Because I have a I have a little pull down list. There we go. There he is. You you have something about we're we're talking about the virus, and you want to talk about the MTV clip? Who what? What did you say? I think you want to talk about the your YouTube channel. Oh my YouTube! Yeah, channel. I'm on the. I'm watching the show on YouTube, and I comment in the comment channel. You know, yeah. the chat room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I do lately. Oh, why? Uh, be, well, because I can. Uh, you know, this is my prime time. Like when I I get work done, and yeah. I'm, I'm getting ready for you know having my oh. lunch, and okay. so it's hard for me to. Because most of my day, I spend in front of a screen looking and talking to people. <laughs> so so when I can actually do other things, I try to do that, you know. If it was fun at first, but mm. now, no. I get calls from all over the world to, oh, can you be a guest speaker for this? Can you come in there? Oh, we need you for that. Or we got a meeting for this. Uh, we have a webinar we'd like you to attend. So it's mm. like I have, I could literally do something from when I wake up to when I go to bed online. Mm -hmm. all day every day but today is a holiday here so i have a little bit of a break what, what what's the holiday it's vsec day and, and what vasectomy day vasectomy <laughs> day yeah all right what's vsec day well it's all i remember from it was that uh when i lived in singapore they told us not to go to the pet store and buy pets and free them so you know people would go and buy turtles and then free them in the ponds Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a Buddhist day, um, mm -hmm. and it uh, commemorates the birth, enlightenment, and death of Buddha. Oh, okay, all right. So it's like Buddha's birthday, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was that was nice. Happy birthday! Yeah. Happy birthday, Buddha! Buddha, Buddha bless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. Well, well. Um, what's your take on what's going on over here? Are we nuts or what? Uh, first of all, question for the group: mm -hmm. Have have humans ever developed a vaccine for a coronavirus? Yes or no? Yes. A successful, a successful vaccine for a coronavirus. Yes. 
when, where, how? I don't know, but I think that one of the uh, uh, one of the vaccines we got this uh, this fall was for a coronavirus. There've been like many of them before this. The we've never cold. we've never had Google it. We've never had a successful virus uh, vaccine for coronavirus. We don't know how to do that as humans. Was was SARS Science. was SARS a coronavirus? I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we do not have a successful, uh, we just don't have that technology. We don't have that science. We don't have that medicine. Okay. We can develop therapeutics and, you know, and uh, treatments, but we do not have a vaccine. Even, even the vaccines that we have, for example, for, that have been somewhat successful are for different viruses. For like the influenza mm. virus, we mm -hmm. have a vaccine for it. But that vaccine has changes every year, and it's not effective in all people. So to somehow think that over many, many years, you know, we've been dealing with lesser, you know, uh, viruses, and, and that somehow all of a sudden now we're going to create a vaccine, I think is magical thinking. There's no scientific medical basis for that prognostication. Well, Br uh, Brian, there, there's a lot of stockholders and money and economics and what and nice thinking. So maybe that's what they're they're going for. But we've never successfully developed a vaccine for our coronavirus in history. And so now suddenly we're well, going to do Br it in three Br months. Brian, Neer Brian, yeah. Neary, yeah. Th this yeah, is I, your... th I think that's one of the p things, Bree, just like you're saying, is people start confusing treatment with the vaccines. Right. Like HIV. Right. They have treatments, but they don't have a vaccine. They haven't had that, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, Brian, do you have more light you can turn on in that room? Oh, yes. Yeah, because you're, you, you're pretty soon we're going to just be seeing teeth. <laughs> okay. um, uh, so, so, uh, Brian, is that is that pretty much so that we've never developed a, uh, a vaccine for a coronavirus? Yeah, I would say the same. Yeah. yeah. As much as I know, I would say yes. I would say Bree's correct. Yeah. Because, like I said, people start confusing the treatments with the vaccines. Right. Right. I'll put the link on the you in the YouTube <laughs> chat. Now, so uh, well, we'll, we'll probably have a treatment before we have a before we have a um, um, a, a vaccine. You know. That's right. And and <laughs> it's so funny because I read like Juliet uh, finds Remdesivir. You know that. Promising hope, and then their stock goes up. It's like yeah. that was used three months ago in Thailand, and we already knew the results. So, like, it's amazing how the news will. Well, like, what, if, what were the results? New, it's it's hopeful. We can do now. We we've been trying everything. Doctors around the world have been trying everything that they have, you know, at this. So it's all a matter of marshalling your public relations value, which is you know, which is exactly what we have in the White House. It's it's public relations. Yeah. In case you didn't know. Uh, the, the federal government, has, it's a success story. It's been absolutely perfect. The way they've responded to everything, perfect. And, hey, and, and, and that's true. It's true because they said it, so we we have, we have believe it. So And I'm parroting it now. Because Bree, that's Phil, has a, que qu qu Phil yeah. has a question for uh, you. Yeah, I had to walk away, but did anybody ask Bree if he was Corona Boy and spread the coronavirus when he was on that bus? <laughs> Uh, uh, or what, was it just a simple influenza or uh, a walking pneumonia or something? Uh, when, when I have you no think, idea. Uh, do you think you had the coronavirus? I, I don't know. Uh -huh. I have no... It's possible. It's certainly possible. I was definitely ill. Um, some, some of the symptoms I could say yes, but others I would say no. So I, I just don't know for sure. How long did it last? Uh, how, however, those around me and near me never got sick, huh. uh, including two elderly in-laws who lived with me for three so months. So probably that isn't what it, that probably was. From China. Yeah. And yeah. they that never got sick. You didn't have it. Hmm. Well, it's possible because I, I, I have a, I'm kind of like young Sheldon. I'm a germaphobe in a way. I don't, so I use, for example, when we went on vacation, I had my own room and my own bathroom. So I never mixed with them. And we never, we always went out to eat uh, or they would bring stuff back to me when I, if I couldn't go out. So I, I pretty much keep my distance and I always, always have hand sanitizer on me. I have the world's largest collection of hand sanitizer I can show you. And uh, I, I just always travel with that. And 
when I go on a plane, I take Clorox wipes and I wipe down my entire area before I sit down. The, um, uh, the, you know, the rails, the seat buckle, the trays. I do a much better job than the steward, you know, the cleaning crew because uh, they miss a lot of things. And so I, I literally, I can show it to you now. I have a travel kit with Clorox wipes, gloves, masks. They let you on the plane yeah. with that stuff? I, was I go I, I, on every I, single plane I've ever flown on. I Clorox wipe down the entire wow. area. Now, are you what we, what, are that, you, that plane that uh, you were taking out of Dubai, I thought was like first class, you know, the, the best you could get. Well, uh, Emirates automatically tests for COVID-19. They have a 10-minute, 15-minute test. So if you fly Emirates, you get an immediate test before you fly. They they did it on the first flight was I think April fifteenth to Tunisia. I wish I would, were still in Dubai. They're doing a great job. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, so uh, I mean, it's um, we're we're up we're up Schitt's Creek. You know, there's no uh, answer for this. I can hard, I can't hardly wait. But you know, we're going to see the incidences in the rest of the country on the rise. In fact, we already have. Mm -hmm. uh, if you compare New York's trajectory, which went up, plateaued, and then started coming down, as it's coming down, the rest of the country is going up. So uh, what's our president doing about that, Phil? I'll let you answer it. Huh? We're well, number one. And, uh, hey, do you hear those dogs barking in Breeze, uh, in, uh, off Breeze, Mike? You, can you hear those dogs, Bree? Who let the dogs out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Terrible dog. <laughs> uh, uh, no, more, no more sound effects or I'm hanging up on you. <laughs> yeah, but it's Breeze dogs. <laughs> oh, boy. Where do you see Texas in two weeks? You think it's going to go be a bad, huh? Yeah, the, the cases were already on the rise May 1st. The last three or four days have been the highest incidence of new new cases, and there's no way they've, they've been able to see what's happened from opening up everything on May 1st. It takes two weeks before all that stuff hits. Is somebody behind that door that's opening? There's a door behind you, and it's, and it's just Well, opening. you're distracting us by asking that question. No, no, I'm looking at the Ooh. door behind Charlie. Polder guys or something. <laughs> That's just the bathroom. It's just uh, open. Oh, that it's it's not a home invasion. <laughs> no, no, that, that's that's they don't they wouldn't come in from that way anyway. I got my Dallas Cowboy uh, sign there that protects me. Well, maybe they had a pee. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, um, so you know, where's this, where's where's this all going? I mean, you know, I, I, what I, what bothers me, is uh, the president and the administration and a lot of these governors who want to see the economy going at the risk of people's lives. Yep. You know, and and that's the problem with living in a capitalistic society that they look upon this as being uh, a, a very uh, important that we get everybody back to work because God forbid, you know. Uh, I've had people call me today, other stores, and they said, are you open? And and I said, no. You know, it was supposed to be uh, the 31st uh, that uh, Newsom put the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, you know, I'm doing installations, but I'm, I'm not open to the public except by appointment. And so these other stores, uh, and ones like mine and, and others that I know, they're open. They're, they're, they've changed their website. They're saying, hey, we're open for business. And you know, uh, they're they're like going full steam ahead. Well, I, I called a, another store in Marin, and she said, "No, I'm, we're not going to open until uh, they lift the uh, they lift the thing." Well, and, you know, well, you're, you're being you're being like, you're being responsible. Yeah, well, you know, I'm staying closed when you're supposed to stay closed, and uh, you know, I'll open when you're supposed well, to. Open. Well, what was this thing about about them thinking that it was okay to open up because it was okay by Newsom? They relaxed some things for construction, but that didn't give people the right to open up retail stores. I mean, if you go to a florist, you got to pick the flower, flowers up on the curb, you know, uh, and it's, you know, curbside handoff. I, you know, what, what are people coming into a floor covering store browsing around? I said, no, nah, I don't think that's going to happen. And plus, if they got sick or they said they got sick, they could sue me. 
So, you know, uh, I figured, you know, I'll just keep doing it the way I'm doing it. My website says I'm uh, open by appointment, you know. Yeah. yeah. But Trump wants to make it so you can't sue anybody for getting sick. That'd be nice. Yeah, uh, that'd be because real. once people return to work, you don't want to put that liability on. Uh, Can we sue on... him? Well, making people go back to work, but then well, they want to make it so not... if they get sick and die, you can't sue. You're not making anybody go back to work. You you have a choice. Oh no. I have a choice. Well, well, yeah, yeah starve because they won't put you. You can't go on. Um, unemployment. In, you, in Texas, you, in Texas, you can be fired for not coming into work. Am I right, Charlie? Pay, and I can pay. That's right in Texas. I can pay people to sit at home, and I do. So uh, with well, the heat plan, uh, instead of them taking uh, uh, unemployment from the state, I got federal funds to pay rent. A, a portion of it, and uh, to uh, pay salaries, the average salary they were making before, and then once the uh, thing is lifted, they could come back, and anything I pay them is forgiven from that loan. Now, let me ask you, Rob, your company, mm -hmm. are they? Yeah. what are they doing about all of this? I mean, obviously, in some states, I suppose they could open up and they send their said people back to Today, work. in fact. They said that um, they are going to open up when they are ready, and then it's going to be um, you have the choice. In phase one, you have the choice to stay home if you don't aren't comfortable coming back to the office. But they're also retooling all the offices, so uh, the desks will be six feet apart. Um, they're going to have uh, only going to allow in the first phase. They're only going to allow I think a third or less of the the, the capacity of the building to go in um all the cafeterias all that stuff's going to be closed um so you know they're and they're being very conservative and they said look we we don't want anybody to come back until you're ready to come back right so until, um, until work from feel, home until you're ready until you feel it's well, safe company sure. feeds his people how does that work with the cafeteria do they give them brown boxes or lunch bags and also, it, some of the bigger locations have okay. the old-fashioned uh like in our Dallas office, I used to work for our, you know, they closed it uh, yeah. when it, when uh, we sold off that business. But that huge office there, they had a tremendous cafeteria. You can get anything you wanted to eat, hot or cold. I mean, it was unbelievable. I used to go to events at Adobe in downtown San Francisco, and they had a big cafeteria there uh, that, you know, we were allowed to go get drinks and, and stuff uh, mm -hmm. uh from from their uh, from their thing while the event was going on, but yeah, it was uh, it was very nice. You know, Adobe's off Townsend Street if, uh, in Alex's old stomping grounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but anyway, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it and and Brian, what are you doing about your your organization? <clears throat> it's funny because we have we have this one. <clears throat> we have a couple big areas in Building One. Just, just oh, by the way, by the way, just for people who haven't heard you on the program before or been listening but haven't heard what you do what is it exactly your company does so so we do detection so we detect stuff like uh, we do tb for bill melinda gates foundation for africa and then we do uh everything from you know flu regular flu to uh geez, uh, MRSA to uh, C. diff, all these other different diseases. We have HIV, HPV, and HV, HVC over in uh, Inc., over in Europe. Mm -hmm. So we're just getting into that market here. And yeah, so we do all detection. Okay, so you're, you, you, you create the devices for detection? <clears throat> yeah, the, the owners, so we've been around for about 22 years. I've been mm -hmm. there 16 years. And the people who started the company, they actually built the instrument and they came up with this cartridge that has all these chambers inside, and you take the sample, like for for COVID, you know, up the nose, and they break it off into here. And all we do is all the person that's running the test is they just close the they close it and they put it right into the instrument. Mm -hmm. The instrument runs the test about 45 minute test, and then they'll be able to tell if the DNA is multiplied millions of times inside the small chamber. Wow! So it's all detection. Wow. And and your chamber has the reagent in it. Or <laughs> People have to buy the reagent from China. Yeah, yeah, different different assays for this are different, but for flu, yeah, the reagents are all inside, so all onboard reagents. So we have dried reagents, and then we have the wet reagents. 
So it does all the mixing and everything in here. It's pretty amazing how. Now, it let works. me ask Bray. He said you said that in your part of the world they did try remdesivir, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, and what was Island. what were the results? Mixed. What do you mean mixed in what respect? It helped some people, didn't help others. They didn't. They don't. They didn't release a scientific based uh, study. They, yeah. They were just. You see, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but. You know, when, well, did you ever watch MASH? Yeah. Yeah. The television show. So sometimes in the, in the, in the series, you would see the doctors and they would say, well, we're going to try this. And then people would look around like, we've never tried that before. Like, why, how dare you do that? And the, they did it because they were on the front lines and that's what they had available to them and people would die if they didn't. So, Horror. so you see this happening in, in, you know, the, the physician's creed still holds, do no harm. But if you, if you have a bunch of people dying and you're pretty sure that they're going to die and you have a treatment that you've used for other, you know, other similarly what you see, mm -hmm. they're going to they they they're probably going to ask the family, can we go ahead and do this? But that's different from from lining up 30 people and saying you're going to be our control group and these 30 people you're going to be, you know, the one to receive the treatment. That's different. So we have anecdotal evidence all over the place. The, the reason why you see it reported, though, from a place like Gilead is because they have, they're a big company, they have lots of money, they can do these trials, they have a public relations firm. So you're hearing it in the news as if it's something new because they've marshaled all the resources. That's what they do. It's kind of like... Okay, but let, know, me ask you, let me ask you this, though, Bree. Gilead has said that if their thing works, they're planning on giving away most of the dosages for free. So how, how is it in their best financial interests to come up with the solution? Um, then you have to understand management theory. And the, the, what you are, it, you, you basically want to build value for the company. So if, if you believe that uh, developing a vaccine and handing it out for free uh, benefits your long-term stability as a company, you okay. will do it. It's like um, me, you know, opening up a pizza store and giving okay. away, you know, free pizzas the first week, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and feeding the frontliners or something like that. I, I might lose short term, but in the long term, I'm going to I'm going to bring value to my company and I'm going to, you know, rise above the other, so to speak. So it all has a value. Yeah, uh, they, they yeah, they can't be. I mean, they can be altruistic to a point, but, you know, not beyond that. Right. Right. I have to tell you something. Like we all know, you know, Kelly Clarkson is a great singer, and Mariah Carey. Is but she I have to tell you, in my is time, she? I've met people. <laughs> hmm? Is she a great singer? Well, that's what I'm going to say. I've met people who I believe are better singers. But the reason why Kelly Clarkson is because she was on a show. She rose yeah. up through the competition. She has a publicist. She works with a record company. Okay, so this is the difference. I'm trying to, you know, build analogies between why you hear one thing, but. But we already know in this part of the world that people have been trying. If you look up in the Philippines, uh, they've also been experimenting, you know, with with different drug combinations, and um, you know, and in Thailand, and so we hear it all the time here. Um, you know, so you when I read we, that, do you think we as the stock price goes up, we as like, a nation mm -hmm. are are too egotistical to accept the findings of another country? Yeah, could be. Because I, you know, they, right now over at Oxford, they think they have a vaccine. And we're just not making a big deal out of it, you know? Uh, yeah. So, I mean. Well, I, remember, there was some guy in California who was on Fox News all the time, and he said that, that their lab had a vaccine, you know, or, or some treatment. I don't, I don't know. You, you know, I, I read all of this, and I was so hopeful for many <laughs> weeks. And then I just started to Google, like, and I would notice in some of the reports that they would mention little things. And then I started looking it up and I typed in, I was like, has there ever been a successful vaccine for a coronavirus? And I got from Yale, NHS, um, an Australian uh, news, and, and the multitude said, no, we've never developed it. And even if you do, it, it can't apply to everyone. And, and, and it can change annually. And there's just so many variables that, you know, and then then there's also yeah the issues of how they're testing it and who you know the whether they say it works on monkeys you know so 
I don't know. And then there's an issue. Well, they, they say, say they have the used it. They have tried it on human beings, and it has worked in some cases. And in other cases, it doesn't. And what they have to do is to find out why it works in some cases, and it doesn't work in others. And right. in order to have a positive result, I think you have to have more than just anecdotal uh, uh, right. information. That's right. Yeah. I mean, in Japan and Thailand, they're using. Oh, they're also using lopinavir and ritonavir. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're, they're just all doing this. And I've also read that the coronavirus is unique in that it, it can infect different parts of the body. Like sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's respiratory. And apparently doctors consider the lungs to be a very difficult uh, area to deliver medications. And yeah. they almost consider it uh, as an external rather than internal. But then I've read that coronavirus can infect the heart and, and get into the brain. Well, what's and, happening and, here, and what, we're, we, what we yeah. found out is that in uh, 30 to 40-year-olds, uh, even down in the late 20s, they're getting strokes as a result of corona. And now they're finding that children are getting, what is it? They're getting, um, uh, it's not a stroke, it's something else. Um, but it, it, it is affecting children now. They're getting, a, they're getting a thing that's a rash all over their body, and it was known as something else at one point, but it does cause that. So, and, and then they're finding that the strain in, the United, in, uh, in California is not the same strain that's in, uh, in New York. That we have a different yeah, strain. They, S and L, they have S and L strain. That it's just amazing. It's amazing how little we know after so long. And and all of these places are doing all this research, and yet we don't have sort of one way to deliver information that people can trust. Or, and it's it's like Rashomon media, you know, all the stories mm. that, and, and what I read. That usually, and this is something that I've done my for thirty years. I look at patterns in the way that media cover things. And I've looked at countries, people, events. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I'm telling you, I'm confounded by COVID-19 and coronavirus in right. terms of the amount what of information. I, well, you know what I'm confounded by right now? What Phil's looking at on his iPhone. <laughs> uh, uh, same thing that uh, Rob is looking at, but I'm, I'm trying to hold back my uh, unbelievable humor and uh, not make any jokes. Yeah. Uh, so and, and and Rob, what are you looking at? I'm playing backgammon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we probably should close. It. I think Do we you should use the doubling cube. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, maybe we should just close the show down tonight. Is it that boring? Yes, no, I Brian. Just, uh, I, it, it relaxes me. <laughs> to make it more boring, so Bree, Bree, I have a question for you. Uh, so okay. I used to watch the pro. I watched the this program religiously every every day but before i start calling in but i had a question so our company is called cepheid and i remember one one time you had mentioned that and you said you were looking for the stock before cphd you said you were looking for the stock and it was not available anymore how yeah. did you find out about our company how did i what find out about our company you said oh. it. because i read i i read voraciously mm -hmm. um all media throughout the world all the time. So I can tell you, you know, bits and pieces of information. Whenever mm -hmm. I travel somewhere, I usually find that there's a local newspaper and they usually have an online. Mm -hmm. And some of them have radio stations and some even, depending on how many tourists go there, they have English language radio stations. So I listen to them all the time. I find them, I find it yeah. fascinating because if you just pay attention to sort of national or international news, it's always the same thing. I mean, if you watch CNN, it's like the same three stories over and over, and even local news, they'll mm -hmm. tend to do it. But if you uh, build a, a big sort of uh, library of access to different media outlets, you can get these little bits and pieces of information. So that one probably came my way through, you know, one of these channels. You want, you want to know something that's gotten to me about the uh, about the news services? Uh, I watch Cuomo every day uh, because I find his uh, his uh, little dissertations to be educational. Mm -hmm. I find them to be uh, uh, invigorating in some ways, you know, in that he doesn't make you feel good. He just makes you feel as though you can do something about it, right? Um, 
And w one day uh, this week, his speech was about, again, he, it's something he always likes to talk about, about he's sick and tired of this being a blue state thing and a red state thing because it's not political. We're talking about human lives here, and we should not make it political, that our political differences should be put aside and we should do anything it takes to solve this problem and to end human suffering. And then I turn, I, I watch the rest of the day on MSNBC, and guess what they're doing to the coronavirus situation? Making it political, you know? <laughs> I can't what, help what, it. What's it CNN doing? Ratings. What's Fox doing? What's Newsmax doing? What's America One, which Trump is buying? Uh, what are they doing? Uh, they're all being political about this. Nobody's learned the lesson that this is about human lives. This isn't about whether you're red or you're blue or you're left or you're right or male or female or anything like that. Yes, Charlie. Speaking of that, it seems like the same people who were getting so mad at Colin Kaepernick about the Black Lives Matter and kneeling at the football games are the same people that are saying everybody should go back to work and so so what if some people die? He, he, they forgot about how all lives matter. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, and I, so I don't understand it totally. I mean, I don't understand how, how you can be uh, taught a lesson by somebody who politically you agree with and then turn around and go back to your regular, regularly scheduled programming and be so biased about this that it isn't a he said, she said, you're right, I'm left. I mean, these are human lives. There are people yeah. dying in this process. And I'll tell you who's being extremely political is Trump. And who's being extremely political are probably a lot of the Democrats. But we need our president to be more less political in this situation than any other single human being in the scenario because he's the leader of the country. And yet he's the most political. Mm. Yeah. And, and you often get the feeling that his decisions are based upon his political future. You know, so he wants everybody back to work so they can't hold the economy against him. But the fact is that if he gets everybody to work and everybody gets sick, the economy's going to go to shit anyway. And not to mention the fallout of millions of people dying on his watch. That's not going to bode well either. Yeah. And I think this is going to go higher than 100,000. Oh, yeah. I, th yeah. I think it's going to go way I think it's going to go much higher than that. How do you how do you answer those questions? You know, and all he's doing is thinking about how can I how can I make myself look good politically? He's not thinking about how do I save human lives? Because if he did, he wouldn't he wouldn't care what he, if what he did put him in bad favor with some people. He would just care that it saved lives. Yes, Charlie. But to his his but to his sure. defense, neither are a lot of other Republicans. Well, I, yes, of course. Yes, Charlie. Well, we had nine congressional hearings over Benghazi where four people died. <laughs> yeah. We got 73,000 <laughs> people dead now. And I don't think we've had one hearing, have we? Nope. They is want Trump's fault? What? Yes, it is. I don't think so. It's on his watch, Phil. So, I, it doesn't matter. It could have. Believe me, if it happened Billy, on Obama's watch, the art fault that they that Phil, they Pearl Harbor. Are, Phil, are you forgetting the Obama plan that was in place? That no. once Trump got in, he pushed aside and said, I, "We don't need this," and he got rid of the task I, force. Uh, and, I expand on that. Good. You know, it was Bolton when he took over the NSA that said that that uh, program should be handled by another part of that uh, of his uh, deal. So it never went away. It just changed uh, uh, the, the group. So was that being handled then? Who's handling it? Bolton, Bolton Who's obviously. Who's handling it? What department it well is that? What department is that now? And well, the, who put him in? Who put him in charge? Bottom line, the buck stops at that desk oh, in the yeah, Oval yeah. Office. Well, let me sorry. tell you. Not, it's, there's Wrong. no sorry. I mean, <laughs> if you get attacked, like we have been attacked by a virus, 
uh, he's done what he needs to do and, and more uh, to help the states overcome these problems. Yes, Brian. And help the states, but, but they're just, he's going to blame the governors. If everything starts ramping back up, they say like 19 states are 19 states are still trending up, but then most of the country is starting to he reopen. Told he's just by, to blame the governors. He was told by the governors that it wasn't up to him to open or not open, that it's up to him to get masks and ventilators uh, to the states, but it's up to the governors as to whether they're going to do it. And don't you remember him getting his hand slapped when mm-hmm. he said he could uh, uh, open up those things or close them down? But why do we need a president then? Well, because he does other stuff. He's on a different well, level. Well, what can you of- say about a president whose idea of, of running this country is the dog ate my homework? <laughs> That's not what he said. You know, fake news. And it- yes, that is what he it's said, not- Phil, by Did measure. Did you read uh, The Prince by Machiavelli? Oh. Did you have to read that in college? <clears throat> because it's like textbook Trump. <laughs> the, the, you know, the, the fact that uh, you, all you have to do is just look at numbers, you know, and look at realities. What I find, I mean, it's, if, it, if it weren't so tragic, it would be funny that they were, they were thinking of closing down the White House task force on coronavirus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, no, they're, they're, they're they bringing it back. There were other people that were going to handle it. And I guess he uh, the next day he decided that he wasn't going to do that yet. Because so. it's popular. Because it wasn't. I think they can. I think he could close it tomorrow. Because after all, it's been perfect <clears throat> textbook. It's so great, it's successful. Smart it's a perfect, in the successful room. job that the federal government has done. <laughs> so I mean, why not close it down? Why right. keep it running? You no, know, the rest they of the it. Done, And like a miracle, this has all gone away. The rest of the country's done just fine. It's New York that uh, is is no, all. Except Nebraska and Wisconsin, and, which are and, now and seeing Phil, the most Phil, there are some states know. right now are seeing a, the largest raise in cases that they've seen in well, this entire had four thing. Four cases, and it went to eight. You had a hundred percent. No, increase. that isn't the case, Phil. It's more than that. Yeah, it went from eight hundred to twelve hundred in Texas a day. Yeah. Well, they they get eight hundred deaths. Wait a minute. A wait a minute. Hold on a second. How many Charlie in one day? Uh, 1,200 cases, new cases, new cases of COVID a day, which is the highest it's ever been. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I'm not, I guess Texas is know. ramping up big time. Yeah, you can't, you can't see that. But that was, that's the one that Charlie's just saying. Yeah, going up. Texas is still going up. The 19 states seen an upward trend in new cases, but the majority of the country is reopening. Yeah. So 19 states still going up. And it's in those states, by the way, that are reopening mm-hmm. that they've been going up. You know. Yep. It's a good thing nobody travels between states or anything. I mean, I New mean, York. Gosh, yeah. Imagine that happened. New York went up, went up, <laughs> so uh, to, up. went up today to 234, I think, from 230. But we had been up around 700, 800 at one point. Deaths a day. So we've been. We haven't even hit a thousand deaths so far in Texas. It's only like nine hundred and seventy for the whole virus, whole two months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you watch. I mean, you're going to see a devastation happening because people are opening up, and it's not that they're opening up, but too many people are being taking it to, as a chance to go to the beach and hang out with each other and play yep. volleyball. You know. You know, I saw Padre fo- Island. I saw photos released uh, in that Jacksonville, Florida beach, and uh, it turns out that some of the photos showing people not distancing were actually shot two years ago. And uh, where did you hear that? Hmm? Where did yeah. you hear that, Phil? That's not what I heard. I heard well, that. you know, listen to real news. Oh, good. Where do I get? Where can I find my real news? You mean Phil? Y- the news that that uh, played down the COVID virus for what? How yeah. long? Is that the news you listen to? Not necessarily. The one, the, the one with Sean Hannity, who said it was all a, all, a blue all, hoax. All, all I know yeah. is the is the is the videos <laughs> well, Robert, that were coming out of. Uh, that's what it is. That were coming out of, I believe, out of mm-hmm. uh, out of Southern Florida, were just a couple of weeks ago. They were an old video, Phil. They were people, they were college students on spring break you're, this year. You're talking about yeah. Miami Beach before the lockdown. Uh, I'm talking about uh, the the beaches in uh, Jacksonville, Florida, which is the northern part of Florida, uh, were were closed down 
And then when they opened them up, they had all these pictures of people not social distancing and things like that. And mm -hmm. it turns out that those pictures oh, where, were... Where did pictures. you hear that those pictures were from two years ago? Well, I listen to Fox, I guess. Yeah, but, I, uh, guess, uh, I guess. Uh, or maybe... Yeah, maybe, no, maybe, maybe do, you, because, do you watch Newsmax, Phil? No. But oh, you listen do to you MSNBC. Watch, uh, do you watch, uh, do you watch, do you watch uh, America One? No, no, I don't get it. Oh, I thought you did, Phil, because you were the one who tried to turn me on to America One. I, I used to get it, and it was called O A N N. Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, yeah. One America Network. You something. know, you know, Donald Trump Jr. is buying into that. I think it's a good idea. Oh yeah, because we know what's going to happen with Donald Trump if he doesn't win. He's going to be on uh, uh, over there doing a talk show every day. No, he's not. He's not leaving the White House. I'm telling you, <laughs> November comes. This co if, if we're fucked, either way, Democrat wins. He is going to cry that the entire election was fixed. He's going to destroy everything that's left about this country, and he's not going to leave quietly. If he if he wins, we're fucked either way. So. <laughs> Come November, we're just fucked. Yeah. yeah. So That's what we got coming for Election Day. Yeah. You're saying he's pulling a Maduro, uh, mm -hmm. like a guy in Venezuela? Guy's not going to leave. He's Phil. He, he was gonna, calling the election fixed until he got elected. Yeah. He's in. That's well, why. Uh, that's really? the one saving grace that maybe he won't destroy the our only, electoral That was system. the only time he was right. The election was fixed. <laughs> he was he was already saying the fix is in at his rallies. Yeah. The fix is in. Then he wins. Maybe the fix <laughs> was in. Ah, oh. <laughs> well, I'm red. I don't know. Unbelievable. I'm, uh, are you following the faithless electors uh, case at the Supreme Court? No. Where the toilet flushed? <laughs> well, yeah, that one was interesting. <laughs> but they're uh, they have a case now whether or not. Uh, faithless electors are allowed to vote their own will, or whether they are required by law to vote what for the with the popular state vote. I thought after the first round they were allowed to vote with their own will. So, so if uh, if it went to a brokered convention after the first round, then they were allowed to to vote some other way, right? Um, well, but you know, you know, we we haven't heard word part. one tonight from Jeff. Nothing. That's good. <laughs> Nothing. I, I'll tell you what I what I know. I hear a lot of people who have no idea what's going on. They don't want to know what's going on. They, they want to be in La La Land. What do you mean they don't know what's going on? You mean about the coronavirus? Yes. Yes. That that they could die. Did, did yeah. you hear yeah. that a homeless people? And, be and then a lot of people just think, you know, it's not us. It's it's them, whatever that means. It's yes. old people who are dying, not Jeff. Not middle aged yeah. kids. Jeff, did uh, you hear called third person perception or third person yeah. effect? Okay. okay, wait a minute. Phil wanted to ask a question of Jeff. Yeah. Did you hear the interviews that uh, down in L.A. some newscasters went and started talking to some of the homeless people and asked them if they had heard of the coronavirus and you know and and so forth? Most of them had had no idea that it was going on, at least the ones that they interviewed. And uh, it, it was it was surprising to me, you know, because they don't have TVs. They don't. Yeah, how would they know? They don't have TVs. Yeah, or yeah they, don't, they don't have access to the same kind of media that we do. And uh, they really didn't know what it was or what was happening. But and that was to uh, support what you were saying, that people, you know, didn't know. I think our one to six cleansing of the subway or one to five cleansing of the subway every night starts started tonight, I believe. Or, uh, and what they're going to do with the homeless, because they have to push them out of those cars they've been sleeping in, is they are going to have accommodations for them if they want to use them. You know? Yeah, moving them to Harlem? Yeah, probably, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, they, they, they're starting a uh, really... A, a, is the, I don't know how they're going to do it. I mean, how many cars do they have to clean every night? It's an incredible amount, you know. Do you think people are going to be using a lot of the cars in the beginning, or they'll uh, be able to have a more limited uh, service? I wouldn't use them. Yeah, I wouldn't I, try I, them. I, I wouldn't try them. I don't fly anywhere? Huh? What? I don't want to fly anywhere. Oh, but I think there's a lot less people getting on the on that system 
Yeah. Then, then we're oh, doing ridership it. is down by 90 yeah, percent or something ago. like that. You know, what, what I, mean, I mean, there's some people who absolutely have to use it. I mean, the reason he wants to keep it clean is for the uh, the workers that go to hospitals. They have to use the subways to get there in many cases. Mm -hmm. Um, um, the police, a lot of people have to go to work using the subways. It was yeah. the way to, I mean, what are you going to do? Take a cab? You know. So um, they're going to, um, uh, but for, for policemen and, uh, and, and uh, hospital workers and so on, during that period of one to five in the morning or whenever that time period is, they're supplying them actually with Ubers and Lyfts and everything. So they can yep. get to their job. So the I other they uh, worked out special parking for healthcare workers in New York City, allowing them to park on the street outside of hospitals. Yeah, but with a permits. lot of those healthcare workers don't have cars. Oh, oh. okay. Do, they, yeah. well, do the doctors still have MD plates in New York? I, I knew this guy. He was an MD, and he would park in the middle of Fifth Avenue uh, and and just leave his car there, and nobody nobody bother him. Uh, because he had special MD plates. I don't know if they still have that. I've never seen it in California. Brian. Apologies to any Muslim viewers today. <clears throat> Brian. Cuomo said, Cuomo said, like, 50 years is old now. What the heck? 50 yeah. years is old. Yeah, he said, I yeah. hate to hear that, but 50 years is old. Yeah. yeah. What is he, 39? <laughs> no, he's, 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 uh, he's 66, I think. He's 66, oh. something like that. He's uh, 60. I think he's 60. Well, I, I wish uh, he's going to look better five days dead than I look right now. You know, yeah. I mean, he's he's a good looking guy. And um, he has, uh, you know, I, I was telling Ronnie this yesterday. I feel so good that I live in a state where that guy is the governor. OK, uh, you're he, talking about Cuomo. I thought you were talking about your governor, or your uh, mayor. Uh, oh, no, forget de Blasio. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, you'd be amazed, Cuomo you'd be amazed. Our, our governor. Yeah. You'd be amazed. A lot of people in California, a lot of my friends, listen to Cuomo every morning. But Cuomo's got a big audience. Yeah, Cuomo yeah. makes you feel like it's it's almost um, like having chamomile tea. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. You sit and listen to him, and he has a way of it's relaxing. You know, you well, feel like you know what things people... are not good, but but. But uh, he never lies. There's a way out of it. He Rob, never lies. You'll get to the you. same feeling watching Wheel of Fortune at seven o'clock. Okay? <laughs> I don't. It's no Phil, quit, quit, uh -oh. quit. To, it, yeah, I'm hip apologies to our Muslim it, quit, viewers. Quit trying to hypnotize us. We're People never going to think Trump is great. Drink on camera. That's actually <laughs> yeah. illegal anyway, in some countries right now. Hey, that's really the, that's oh. theme that's theme music, <laughs> as you may know. Uh, and uh, it's been a it's been another one of those evenings of um, you know yeah. deeply ensconced in the virus. There isn't much little uh, there's little else to talk about. You want to talk about the Democratic nomination? We could get to that. Doesn't really matter, you know. We're all dead anyway. New York primary is back on. It's back on. Yeah. Okay, uh, but but by uh, by uh, ba uh, right in ballot. Yeah. Uh, but hey, Brian, thank you so much. And Phil, thank you so much. And Rob, I'm glad you got your audio working okay. Uh, Jeff, I'm glad you got your audio working okay. You actually said Long something. Uh, uh, Charlie, great hearing from you. And, Hi, and, Charlie. And, and Bree, call more often. We haven't heard from you in a while. Bree was great tonight. Yeah. I'm on YouTube chats. That's where the, you know, the Somebody. real. Anyway, that's are. it. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and we will wave right back at you okay all right bye bye there they go ladies and gentlemen that's our citizen panel for tonight there'll be another citizen panel being assembled by jack bishop next over most of this same uh, uh mo most of the same uh, gab net uh so just uh you know stay tuned for them next over most of the same station i'm alex ben we'll see you tomorrow night uh 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later.